Last time, my Jaguar absolutely beat everybody. Start with me. I have five points altogether. Tommy also five. You're at four. You're the winner, six points. Nathan, <laughs> you dropped your putter. <laughs> and this time things have changed because we're gonna do something just a little bit different. That's right. On this episode, we're at our favorite mechanic shop, German Auto here in Boulder. And unbiased opinion, according to Toby, I want him to tell us who bought the best car and who bought the junker. Well, I already feel sorry for you. Why? Keep going. So, how about this? How about we go in the order of price? So Jaguar was $6,500, it was right. the least expensive. Yep. How about you go first? It was the, it's gonna be the Junker, right? And then the Nissan Z, Mustang, and then best for last, Mercedes. So the loser for last. Got it, okay, stay tuned. Friends? Friends? Are we friends? Not right now. <laughs> yeah, we'd say that. I'm friends with Toby because he's going to tell me how awesome my car is. No, I want to get to the bottom of this. Uh, last episode, I saw the car, you bought this car, was on the boulder, and you were there. How are you involved with this car? This car was actually coming to my shop that day for a little bit of a tune-up and some woke. Didn't quite make it, <laughs> as you could tell. So he was on his way to you when he went on top of the boulder. Planted it, yep. Wow. Yep. Okay. So, you, so you've so you seen this car before? I have. I've worked on it for quite a few years for him. Well, that's not fair. I think this video is over now. Um, it's not fair. Toby knows this car. Well, no, I'm kidding. So can we inspect this and see what it's like? Probably should see what you got since I know the car. Okay. Yeah, make yeah. Sure, and make sure I wasn't pulling someone's leg. Most importantly, I've been very gentle with it. So everything that Toby's already done, I haven't undone by racing it up and down in really high heat and letting Roman bash it for a while. So it should be just fine. And that backseat is so roomy. Oh yeah, you could fit <laughs> what? Uh, Toddler in there? Golf clubs. Instead. Golf clubs? Yeah, that's about it. I would be surprised if those even fit in this unit. But I'm one of the few that has a backseat. Well, the Mustang has a backseat, so. It looks pretty clean though. I hope you kept it nice. Two plus two, huh? Yeah. Or two minus two. It's two plus two. Nathan, my friend, do, I think you've got some mice living under the hood. No, mice. No, 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 that's not mice. That was because of the uh, excessive heat made by this magnificent engine. It just kind of burned away a little tiny bit of it. Reminding you that it likes to smoke, which most British people actually do smoke. Or maybe gerbils. Gerbils? Ger no, gerbils in Colorado. Gerbils? No. Maybe the guy had a pet gerbil. <laughs> I'll so when it got in a wreck in the front end, you can see the front end was smacked in the front bumper. It actually pushed it in and actually broke the washer reservoir inside the fender well. Uh -huh. So it needs a new washer reservoir to fix the washer fluid leak. It's got a crack in it. Um, the thing was also leaking some power steering fluid from the old man uh -huh. when he had it. So we ended up putting a new power steering pump on it. He also, when he wrecked it, he took out the oil cooler in the front of the bottom of the bumper there. Right. And we ended up supplying him a used oil cooler because they're about $650 from Jaguar. Okay. And he, you know, it was just the, the, the cheapest way out was a used one, which we found him, put that on. No, well, no, no, let me quick question for you because Roman keeps yelling, saying this is a Ford. It's not really a Ford. I mean, you can't get just off the shelf Ford parts and put them in here. Unfortunately not. Exactly. So yep. it's special. It's British. It, it has is. expensive parts. Okay, I just wanted to get that clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're very expensive parts. They're proud of them. Let's put it that way. <laughs> The new windshield they had put in there was a pretty penny. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, so that's one good benefit. It's got a new windshield, new wipers on it. I know that for a fact mm -hmm. with a new power steering pump and a fresh oil change was just done to it. Um, there's also a, a new blend battery someone put in it. So it's, you know, one that sit on, sit on the shelf too long at any state and they sell it to you for cheaper. Oh, okay. So anyway, they so, could save some money on this. That's what happened. Save some money, put it back together and get it back on the road again. Now I noticed it handled pretty good. I mean, it pulled a little bit to the left was the only thing, and it was a real light pull. Do you think that was because of the accident or maybe just because it needs some new tires and an alignment? Probably the the tires would be a big factor on that because these tires are definitely not the best. Yeah. We can peek at them and show you how bad they really are. But, you know, in my opinion, it probably could use an alignment to mm -hmm. verify that everything's straight, you know, and everything's not bent down there. Gotcha. Because when you wreck stuff, something can get bent just slightly and make, make a car pull. Well, what else is leaking? Well, let's, let's find out. Yeah. Let's find out. It's been a while. Well, looks 
my good oil cooler is leaking to me. What? Yeah, that used used plugs aren't quite like they used to be. So oh. when he hit it, he hit the front bumper and actually hit, knocked a sign over. And the sign went onto a boulder, so he rail slid it and smacked this mainly. Oh, so you, you can, can see really why see, it's yeah. right here and smacked. But other than that, this is the only other piece he actually smacked. And visually looking at it, it's really kind of hard to tell right now what's leaking, but it might actually be the O-ring right up here because the highest point of wetness is right up here. There's two O-rings that go to these lines, so very possible that it's just an O-ring on this oil cooler um, um, leaking. Okay. Because possibly because, you know, this whole thing might be a little tweaked still from the wreck because it was the whole incident occurred right here, so. Well, well the British love leaking oil, and well, so I, I'm, I'm helping them. Yeah, yeah, just keep adding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep, keep the load lubricated. Yeah, last time I checked, it wasn't low. There's a drop right there. Yeah, so that's all going to be blowback. You're driving down the highway, it comes down here, hits this, and then blows back to this thing. Right. Because if you look up higher in the engine there, it's dry as could be, actually, for, you know. Yeah, all these bolts yeah, are, are All the oil looking, pan bolts yeah. are looking good. You got a little dingle here from when the thing bottomed out, but it's not leaking out of the oil pan. A little dingle here in the oil pan, but it's not really leaking. All this is basically coming from that O-ling, probably. Well, Which is probably like a five dollar low ring to fix. Isn't it incredible that this isn't too damaged? I mean, it's got a little bit of scratching right here, but this component was built specifically to, you know, all hold these convertibles have that extra extra bracing on them to right. keep them tight. And this is one of the braces they, you know, invented to make it. And it actually took a little bit of just a scrape, a but bit. not bad. Yeah, yeah, most of it was this, just this front front cross member there where the radiator support is. I, I can't really bend down and look underneath the back of it, which is also a place that sometimes these things leak, but mm -hmm. it looked like it was pretty dry last time I looked. Yeah, yeah, so far what I'm seeing, you know, once this is fixed, all of this should be dry again and cleaned up. And you can definitely see, you know, some of your tire issues here. Yeah. It's got actually some cupping going on on the inside, you know, low and high tread pattern. Mm -hmm. So that will attribute to a little pulling and, you know, uneven, you know, spinning of the wheel coming down the road. Well, they're definitely not matching tires. They're Continentals on the back, and these things are called Fusions up front, so. It looks like the brakes are in good shape on it. Got a good 85% of pad life on the front. Yeah. Rotors look pretty decent. They're not lipped, not grooved a little bit of rust sitting on the side of them but that's to be expected since this thing has such low miles it hasn't been driven much how, how many miles does this have 75 or something like 78 ish 78 i believe yeah 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 and the strut is not leaking fluid and looks dry so that's a good thing this is very upsetting nathan for me yeah i'm, I'm, because, I'm thrilled so far because mm. i'd dance a jig if i could Trans the British do. Transmission looks really dry as well. You know, no. you got no, everything's clean aluminum. You got no leaks off the bottom of it here. So that's actually a really good thing too, because that's another expensive component on this unit. I just realized how difficult it would be to get to the drive shaft with that, <laughs> with the exhaust running down the center. Yeah, usually when they're like this, you actually end up having to unbolt the whole exhaust and taking it down in a section just to get to the drive shaft oh, stuff. Pain. Yep, a lot of work just for one little thing. That's the true dual exhaust? Yes. Is that, got, is that right? You got the catalytic motors which are wedged up in here up against the transmission. Which makes them harder yeah. to steal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that was, that's, that's a, a good British thing. invention right there. Uh-huh, real low call and tuck those cats up in there so you can't get to them. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, a couple of these wheels are actually uh, new repopped wheels, so the refurbished wheels on this thing because a couple of them got a little damage in the accident. I bet they did. Yeah, from the curb actually mangled them a little bit so overall the ball joints and the tie rods and there's no play in the wheel so that's a good thing yeah couple of all the o-ring up front we fixed that o-ring i think that's going to be the first thing i would fix so far exhaust is pretty sturdy not rusted out at all hear really, rattling around no rattling looks actually really nice and not a lot of rust on this one at all the 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 previous owner really you know he didn't drive it much and it was a colorado car so I feel really bad for him because he, he tried to baby it, obviously. He probably garaged it and everything else. And then one day... Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sun was in his eyes. Didn't didn't see the curb coming or the rock coming. And before you know it, he was poked on top of it. Well, his loss is my gain because I just got myself an excellent car, Andre. Uh, 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 uh. I, think, I think when it hit the rock, it, it landed lifted. so high, it sat back here a little bit. Yeah, Your departure sense. angle is not great, Nathan. Mm -hmm. It's not really necessary in a sports GT low-slung car. Just so you know. 
No, it, this exhaust actually has the name Jaguar on it. This is not some aftermarket exhaust system, no, just so you know. Is, yeah, very, very original. Aha. I do not see any modifications on this thing parts at all. Parts matching? Yeah. And they're not Ford parts, parts, unlike what Roman kept saying. Yeah, Roman. I haven't seen one Ford part yet on this thing. I'm sure there is one, but, you know, I don't see no Ford emblems yet. I was told that there are a couple com electronic components, like, um the computer itself uh, for fuel management might be a Ford component, but otherwise almost everything else is bespoke, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Got a few bushings that are a little rotted out here, but they're not ripped all the way. They're just some cracking starting on the sway bar end links oh, yeah. and stuff on both sides, but overall really minimal for the age of the vehicle. You know, Colorado is a really dry climate, so. So Nathan, what's, what else is wrong with this car inside? Is there like a radio missing? No, or, the radio's there. Uh, the, actually, the electric antenna does go up and down. That's like the first thing to go in a lot of cars, right? Because mm -hmm, they're, they're mm -hmm. kind of garbage, but it works. Convertible top works perfectly. No rips, no tears. The interior is in excellent condition. The air conditioner works really well. The only thing I haven't tested is heat because it's over 90 degrees. Don't need that today. I don't really need that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's see what Roman bought. Oh yeah, Roman's purchase, huh? Yeah, let's see what uh, what the Nissan ZX has in store. Are you doing the sound test? I'm just listening to the engine and see how it sounds. Give a quick visual. Do you guys know any of the maintenance records on this one by chance? Uh, well, Roman is not here, so... I have no idea. It probably was never maintained. No, I don't. I have no <laughs> idea. Do you know, Nathan? Actually, from what I understand, it was well maintained. Um, but I don't know if they have service records in the dash or not. Well, it looks really clean, unfortunately. Yeah, and I know that they spent stupid money on it. And so it's entirely possible that they got a pretty good version. I mean, come on. Well, the Jaguar was $6,500, this was $8,500. So already you're stepping up in price. You see a little bit of oil and some kind of fluid down in the very bottom down there, but... Can you show that or later? Yeah, later? We, yeah, you can kind of see it in the corner right over here a little bit, like power steering pump down there, there's a little residual. So I'm assuming it's got something small leaking on it. Looks pretty minimal from what I can see, though. Once we get it up, we'll see more of how it looks. Seventy-three thousand miles on this one. Oh, that's Seven. even less than the Jack. A little more money, but a little less mileage. Well, there it is. Sounds pretty good, actually. That's tight. That's definitely. Actually, it's really clean transmission fluid, so that's good. Oh. Uh. Battery date is getting up there in age, so I'm, I'm assuming we could do a battery test. We're probably going to need a new battery on it soon. I found a problem with this Nissan. You want to see it? Yeah. It's right here. It says it's bougie. Bourgeois? Yes. Do you see that? It's elitist. And it's bougie, so that's an issue. That's coming from a guy who's wearing a Texas tall hat. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what would be really funny, Toby? If we pulled the horn... Um, Fuse. Right yeah, just floor. pop that right out of there and then told Roman, you know, that's a $3,000 fix right there. That horn ain't working, so <laughs> it's not safe. I did notice it seems like the automatic antenna sounded a little like it's broken to me. Ah! Mm hmm. Well, wasn't going up and down. There you go. So. It can't kind of extend itself. It won't go up. It looks like the power steering fluid's really full and looks pretty clean, so that's good. Just wanted to verify since I seen a little fluid down there by the pump, make sure you had fluid in it. Some of these parts can actually be kind of expensive because there's not so many of them left. So they like to charge you extra on some of these things. Mm. <clears throat> Seems like the fan clutch is tight. And all the belts look really good. One question would be when the last belt was done back in here, you know. Mm -hmm. At least 80,000, 100,000. Is that that, at that age where, you know, you might want to ask the new owner what he thinks about that. Oh, Nathan, I found an issue. Wait, 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 Nathan. Yeah? Uh, I think Roman ran something over. 
Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I just, I just, I just saw it. What is this? Well, Shock sticks? Don't see any uh, moisture, any buildup on the AC condenser, which is always good. Mm, all right. Now you can start seeing some of this residual oil I was looking at. Definitely has a few small, small leaks. Huh. Do we need to like open this up, do you think? Yes. Or no? we, yeah, we could to see it better. It looks like there's probably one up front real quick. We can take this under shield off. Looks like it's been leaking from this strut for quite a long time as well. You can see a bunch of fluid build up on it. So the strut's actually leaking fluid out of it really bad. You can see it's coming down the control arm all the way. So he's definitely gonna need mm. some new suspension. Oh, which that's, can... that's cheap, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Mm, looks like his brakes have about 45 to 50 percent of pad life left on them, so that's okay. Because he definitely looks like someone might have misplaced the crush washer, put the wrong crush washer on it, because a lot of this is actually dripping out of this drain plug right here mm. and blowing back here on the oh, so transmission. That, I saw that on our floor in our studio. A drip, and we yep. it on the Jaguar. Yes, but it wasn't the Jaguar, it, it was, was this. It was this. Mm. Mm -hmm, which is a pretty decent little leak going on, but... A simple quick fix. The transmission looks really dry actually. Why does it look like it's been burning on the bottom of it? Mm, this thing's probably been leaking oil for so long it's coming back the transmission and then you know dirt just and low grind build up and then it just turns into a cake basically. Oil cake on there. And it looks like someone's been working on this transmission recently because I can see the drain plugs has got some strip marks on it like they used the wrong socket. And it looks like they didn't put the exhaust bracket back in place. <laughs> so these bolts right here should go take the nuts off and put the bracket back on and re-bolt it back up. Got a little bit of rattle in the exhaust somewhere. Yeah. Like. We heard that. Remember when he was hitting hard exhaust? Oh, oh that's right. Yes. Like we can hear that oh, oh, yeah. So it looks like some aftermarket mufflers is what's going on here. Not not factory. There's some bozels. Some of the aftermarket tips on there to, to make it look a little better. Well, there were no tips. Uh, t um, Roman actually bought these. Oh, oh he, had, he, had, he yes. had to do an upgrade, huh? He, instantly? he added the tips. He put on chrome. Mm -hmm. He didn't bother <laughs> fixing it, but he put on chrome. <laughs> Roman. Hmm. It's like, I don't know, a hairpiece without actually glue. And that's probably what's making noise, tell you the truth. Uh -huh. You can hear it. Oh, the tip itself? Yeah, <laughs> the tip itself. God, so he actually made it worse by adding chrome? Yes. <laughs> chrome don't get you home. <laughs> <laughs> you can see over here where they tried yes. to zip tie this back together because the muffler hangers actually ripped in half. Oh, look at that, there's an actual zip tie. Yeah, so that's another exhaust problem. Oh, why would you do that? Uh, well, because they're lazy and they well, didn't have the part. Yeah, $10 part, so they just figured a two cent zip tie on a hot exhaust system. Mm -hmm. Oh. Those are the beautiful stickers that they didn't rip off the muffler when they no, put it they on. they just let them cook. Bake. Yeah, let them bake and see what happens. That could be a fire. Mm -hmm. It's a bad just, idea. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't the best. You can see there's a little seepage coming on by the new diff. It's really minimal, but it is moist. There's not an actual drip coming down yet, so I'm not too concerned with it, but it might actually be coming out of the fill plug. Uh. But it's just a little build up, but nothing to be con concerned with, in my opinion. The shocks are Nissan, by the, by the way. Mm hmm. Interesting. Mm hmm. Those babies have been replaced, in my opinion. I'm sure someone. At These the coils dealer, certainly look new, too. Yeah, at the dealer replaced them. You can tell how shiny they look, and then you can see someone's been in here prying, prying off stuff, trying to line it up. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And we heard that when they were drag racing, when he was going up against you, uh -huh. and he accelerated hard. I could hear he that. started tinging. So mm -hmm. a leaking shock, at least, a leaking seals on the engine oil, transmission oil, mm -hmm. loose exhaust system. Yep. Yeah, the hangers broken. Uh, the we hangers are broken. Properly. Uh, what else is wrong? It's got a seep out of the rear differential, but it's a seep. I'm a little, too a little concerned. seep. Okay. Wouldn't be concerned with that at this point. I'd be more concerned with the suspension and these leaks he's got going on. You know, it can be pretty expensive when you start getting into it. I seriously think you're having a problem. 
All right, now you can kind of get a little bit of a better visual on what's Ooh. going on in here. You can see he's got a couple other oil leaks starting up front here, dripping off the bottom, coming out of both corners. And it's pretty minimal on this side compared to this leak, but it's definitely, he's got some leaks starting on it. I see another zip tie. Mm-hmm. Right over here. Mm-hmm. That's factory though. Okay. Let, let's let's just say that's a factory zip tie. I'll give them a that Yeah, I will try to be nice on that one. <laughs> so what, what circuit is that? Is that oil? Yes, this is gonna be oil leaking and from what I can tell it's coming out of probably the crankshaft seal, which is behind that timing belt stuff, because it's all kind of dripping off the center right there. Either it's the oil pan or the crankshaft seal. Ooh. Needs to be resealed which can be a very pretty penny on a vehicle like this. So is that part of the timing belt then? Um, yeah, so if you, got to, if you got to the crank seal, yep, that'd be part of the timing belt job. You'd have to take all that apart to replace the crank, crank seal. All the rack boots and the rack's not leaking fluid, from what I can tell. Not full of fluid in the boot. Sometimes you squish them and you can hear it. Or they get crunchy and things are really bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. It looks like he's got another small leak. Now that we got this shield off, we get a different angle on everything, and it looks like the valve cover gaskets have a really small leak at them as well. Wow. Yeah, coming down from way back up in there, dripping onto the exhaust manifold. So shortly he's going to start smoking um, from under the bonnet there. <laughs> yeah, but the chrome exhaust tips will take care of that. Yes, yes. So yeah, I think we've seen basically enough on this one, all the bushings and brakes and... All that stuff seems to be decent. It's more of the leaks he's got going on, some suspension issues, and some exhaust work. All right. All right, so next time it's Tommy with his Mustang GT. I think his LeBra is coming off, Nathan. I can't even count how many cars have been destroyed with their, the paint by putting the bra on there specifically to save the paint. Yes. <laughs> I think it's hysterical. Because debris gets behind it, right? Yeah. Starts oh, rubbing. Well, moisture. Yeah. Moisture yeah. gets yeah, in there, build up. completely can destroys it, yeah. Yep, yep. And it might save a few rock pits from a semi-truck, but other than that, you're going to cause more damage, in my opinion, by having one of those. Yeah, I agree. And I have one question to my buddy Tommy. Mm -hmm. Where are his beautiful headlight covers? Oh, he pulled those off. He, <laughs> threw, he threw them out on video. He, I, I think last, he, last episode. Maybe he threw them in here. Thank but you. the car looks better this way. A lot better. Yes. Oh, God, it looked a little bit like a Ford probe to me with those on it. Or something uh -huh, worse. Uh -huh. Something worse than the probe. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> looks like he's got a little issue here instantly. Someone's cobbled a little ground wire on here and done a little customizing, but... Huh. You can see it's loose. It's not even tight on there. Oh, jeez. So that's going to have to be fixed. Someone did a little bit of a at-home repair there. It needs to be fixed a little better so he's got a tight ground because bad grounds can cause a lot of issues. Pretty good in here, actually. The Radiant belts are dry. Okay. Belt's looking good. No dry cracks in the belt. None of that. I'm not seeing any massive oil leaks from up top here. So, so far, he's looking halfway decent. Brake fluid looks clean. I don't believe he bought one with clean brake fluid for once. He never does. That's like his go-to. If it's got dirty brake fluid, he buys it. <laughs> he must just have forgot. You know, that's what he does. Well, this is a low miles car. Once again, this is like 73,000 miles, 77,000 miles. So I'm going to need a power steering service soon. It's getting a little dirty inside there. Like someone actually spent a little money on this car instantly. Some decent tires. Little, These are track full on. Yeah, yeah, the G forces. Yeah, a pretty little bit of wear on the outside and inside, but nothing major. So that's a good sign. I wouldn't use these in snow. No, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend them on even rain conditions. Probably be a little squirrely. Two wheel drive V8. Yeah. Well, Tommy, looks like we do have a little something we can dingy on here. Real small, but he's got a really small leak starting right here. And I'm guessing it probably is coming out of the plastic right here on the oil pressure switch. Oh yeah, I do see yeah, that. Yeah, it's really small and you can see it's moist in there. So nine out of 10, he's gonna need an oil pressure switch, which is actually a pretty cheap fix if that's all we end up finding leak wise. Here's your vent line I was telling you through the EVAP system. So the vent line they run actually is right into this engine bay. So any of the excess fumes that don't get burned up in the engine end up venting out a little bit and that's just the residual smell you get. Huh. So, let's see 
see what else we got going on here. Sway while it's tight. Looks like the bushings are in decent shape. Oh man, someone just put brand new struts on the front of it. You see how brand new those look? Nice and shiny. No way. Yeah, someone spent some money right there. Both sides, brand new. So this Mustang was also $8,500. Mm -hmm. Same as the Nissan. Spent, right. Yep, spent a little, yep. Now is it me or does it look like the transmission may have been replaced? Judging by the uh, markings on it. Yes, 9 out of 10, that's usually not quite factory. Usually when you see markings on that, that's a sign someone wrote some stuff on it. Maybe it's a used one out of the junkyard right. or possibly a rebuilt. Or and rebuilt, they, yeah. they like to mark them that way they know it's the transmission they actually rebuilt. So someone can't pull a fast one on them. It's got that nice stick shift transmission though, you know. I, I know, I know. And, and Tommy likes to rub it into all of us. Mm -hmm. Let's see what these are. Got a little exhaust rattle somewhere. Yeah. Let me check the exhaust tip. Okay. See if it's chrome? Yeah. Let's see if Roman's been here. Like father, like son. <laughs> Basically this rubbing. Oh. So there's a plastic plug-in and it's supposed to have a clip on it to clip in right here like this one does. And it's actually missing, fully missing. So it's basically just in there floating against this, making noise on this ah, bracket that. to hold it in. Yeah. So that's not the end of the world. After you get a new clip for it, that's a, that's a shame. Get her clips down again where she belongs. Looks like the drive shaft. New joints are all good in it. Someone did some work on this. You know, right here they chopped the exhaust off and put the new mufflers in. You can tell. Oh yeah. That's why it's got the noise she does. Some Dynamax, as it looked like. So they did right a little, shocks too, a little so. bit of a muffler back exhaust. Oh yeah, back shocks are brand new. You can see the hardware is even new. They used new hardware on it when they did them. Someone really took care of this thing. Yeah. I hate them. Oh, ready struts though. I've never heard of those. <laughs> so I'm sure that's not the highest of quality of uh, real shock you could put on there. Looks like the fuel filter's been on there for quite a while. I'd probably recommend doing a tune-up on the thing. I don't know when it's tuned up last, but the fuel filter looks pretty old. It's got some rust build up on this side. So that'd probably be one thing he would think about down the road is the little tune-up on it. Some minimal cracking on his diff bushings there, but they're really small. They're not ripped in half yet, so eventually he might have to get some actual locating on bushings, but they're very, very small cracking, so not to be too concerned. Looks like when someone did the exhaust, they ended up reusing some of the hangers and welding to them to hold the mufflers up. But overall, they... Got a little close to the drive shaft, but I don't really see where anything's been rubbing. Same with the back tires, they're a little chewed up a little bit on the inside and outside, but the alignment must be pretty good on this car. Curse not, you, Tommy! Curse I'm not, you! I'm not liking what you're saying. No, really. it's, we're not hearing negative talk, which is really irritating. These rear brakes have about 65 to 70% of pad life left on them. Yeah, overall, I think Tommy did pretty good on this one. He's got a few issues here and there, but... For the money, for what you can get nowadays, especially convertible, I think he did pretty good. But but guys, just wait until you see my beautiful 500 SL. It's gonna be mwah, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Toby's specialty is German cars. Yes. So I, I can see that it's over the door. Exactly. So yes. um, you're. I can, I can see that. You could be in trouble. You could be getting in out. trouble. <laughs> or you could have a fine ride. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. <clears throat> Yeah, overall, I'm not seeing any major issues. Tommy did pretty good. Yeah, he's got a little oil leak to fix. And seems like they all, all got a little oil leak to fix so far, so he's not too far out of the crowd. But it's going to be a cheap one, so I think he did pretty good, actually. You don't see any coolant leaks, and unfortunately... All right, boys, he get did. ready to see perfection, okay? I'm going to... Oh, can you please bring the Mercedes? I can pull that baby in for you. Okay. If it'll start. If it'll start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it usually takes more than one try to start it. And don't even deny it. Oh, look, look, there's a passenger on my car. It's right there. There's a passenger. Yeah. A little rough in here. Looks like someone spilled a lot of Coca-Cola and coffee over here in the corner. Never cleaned it up. 
Looks like they chipped the wood grain too in a few spots and wood grain's cracking all over. I was more concerned with why it wouldn't start outside and I, I almost had to walk back. Yeah, that's three tries, right? Just, just for the record. Oh yeah. Three tries. What, what do you think it is? From what I can tell, you have a bad misfire going on. You're not running on all eight cylinders. When I got it running finally, I put it in gear, it's blah, 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 running rough. Usually means you got a good misfire going on. If you're very lucky, we're talking a tune-up, might cue that. And if you're not lucky, it can start getting really expensive on this old unit. Hey, uh, Toby, why is the odometer not working? Well, that way it can have such low mileage on it, you see? Ah, that that, that okay. way the resale value stays up there. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's how I got it. I did not uh, tamper with, with anything. Most of the time what happens on these Mercedes is behind the actual instrument cluster in the odometer, there's a bunch of drive gears. So there's little plastic gears and the plastic gears actually break or strip. And after they break or strip, it stops working. Okay. The other issue I see is people actually try to hit the reset button to yeah. reset the trip odometer while you're driving. Uh -huh. Big mistake. Uh, that will actually, moving, right? it's moving and then the gears mesh and break the gears. So yeah. that's one thing to note is you never want to actually push that reset when you're moving on the Mercedes. You should have digital like mine, bro. Oh. Ah. This car was designed in the 80s, a decade before any of other cars you saw. And, and when Mercedes designs something, everybody follows. It's the leader of technology. Andre, me and my new pet, Grasshopper here, I'm naming him Tommy, we don't care. See, if it were a manual, there it goes. See? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Yeah. Shaking? Yes. Feels like it's... It's, 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 it's waking up. It's waking up. So you gotta like rev it up to wake it up or what? Give the little gas. Say wake up! These tops are famous for having issues. That's why I asked you if you wanted me to use the top. <laughs> because sometimes there's pistons that are hydraulic pistons to lock the top end under here. Yes. And you'll actually get oil dripping out no of way. that onto your knee while you're driving down the road. Hy That's hydraulic awesome. top oil. He hasn't had that yet. So if you haven't had that, you're doing pretty good. Your pants look white still, so. Yes, you my. Must you must, you know, I, I leaned against the Nissan, but I'm okay. Okay. That's a benefit. Okay, okay. Well, okay. well, what's next? It's perfect, right? And then the engine. Hey. Is the little guy still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. He wants a Mercedes, too. <laughs> so it looks like it's got some, uh, some hydraulic oil in the reservoir up front here still. That's a good thing. Oh, is that where it's at? Well, most of these old ones had them in the back for the convertible, and a lot of these are actually going to be for the suspension, just depending on what option this car has on it. So we'll look a little more and see what you got going on, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be for the suspension on this car. But well, it looks like you another culprit of a washer fluid leak as well. You can see it's wet down in there, and all yeah. the blue crusties. Yeah, it looks that. like you got a little bit of a washer fluid leak on this unit too. It might be just a tank, what do you think? I would say it's probably a pump or possibly a hose. <sighs> so <laughs> these guys over-engineered the hoses. Oh. So they put a heating element line inside the hose for the washer fluid. Perfect, that makes sense. That way it doesn't freeze, right? right? right. But that also becomes a problem over time and age. They start leaking from where the wires come through the hose. Ah, looks like she's a leak, leaking oil over here too, what? so sorry to tell you, but you got a nice oil leak right here ending up on your alternator back here on the bottom of the alternator. I'm guessing it's either going to be a valve cover gasket or a front uh, chain cover gasket. Have to, you know, rip some stuff apart to see exactly where it's coming from. Maybe you can see from the bottom a little more clearly. But that's very inexpensive to fix. <clears throat> Not really. Your car even looking at it costs money. You can see it's actually had a little bit of crusty residue coming out of this coolant cap at one point. All of this is coolant. So in my opinion, the coolant cap's probably bad. You would have to pressure test the cooling system and verify you have any other leaks in the system. Um, either the cap o-ring's starting to go bad or the actual reservoir itself. Um, but it's not actively wet today. This is far from, far from supposed to be like that. It's missing a oh. lot of it, as you can see. And it's actually adhesive to the hood with special adhesive, so uh -huh. it stays with the heat. And it is missing a big portion of it, which at this but age, that's, that's okay. it's common at this age. Okay. I do see it a lot. And the problem with that is if you miss too much of it, all that heat off that V8 is going to boil the paint on the hood. Over time, your red nice hood's going to crack and start fading and 
start looking really bad. Now, if you recall, mine was missing about this much. Yes, I recall. Yours is missing this much. This is the Mercedes. Why <coughs> check your oil? It doesn't burn oil then? Or what are you trying to tell me? Yeah, what are you trying to tell me, Andre? That's, but it's a German machine. It is full, and it does look pretty clean. I give you that. All right. There you go. Yeah. And at this age, I do see a lot of these radiators starting to seep on some of these classes, which doesn't look to be the case on yours so far, so... I think you got lucky. And is, are these the air cleaners then? Yes, those are a double air cleaner. So there's one air filter in this side and one in this side. Small and the, bank. Yeah, the cold air actually comes in from the front here through the ducting. That's why I won the drug race, by the way. We better we get a little peek down here. See what's going on. Oh, that does not look complicated. It looks no, simple. it's, yeah, it's just, <laughs> just an SL type this of stuff. This screams German in every way. Mm -hmm. Overall, it's looking pretty good. I see a little bit of dry cracking on this vacuum hose here to the EGO valve, but... It actually might be almost an expensive to replace. <laughs> and do you see how these things have the fuel injectors, which are the beginning of the fuel injector rails right here? Uh -huh. They're old mechanical injectors. So you have no electronic injector to this car, except this cold start valve is electronic. Okay, so, so this, that's a good thing. This old distributor, fuel distributor right here is what runs the whole system back here. Mm -hmm. And they are pretty decent when they run right, but the problem is, is if they sit around too much, they develop a misfire like you have. Oh, so yeah. what happens is the injectors will get clogged up from you know bad gas and sitting too much. So that's why I definitely get that fuel injector cleaner in there as soon as you can. Run that through the gas tank and then, you know, see if that helps any. Okay. That's a great piece of advice, so, uh, which is easy to do. We'll put that back on for you just to be nice. And the other one? Uh, I guess. Okay. It's like this glue I see back here. They, they glued the bottom of the air box. is actually cracked down here in the bottom and broken. And they used a bunch of RTV gasket maker back here to fill in the cracks and the holes. Oh, that's epic. Uh -huh. I mean, sorry, Andre. Yeah, and I can, that's, that's no good. I can still see a little hole in it where they missed a spot. So you potentially could be getting um, unfiltered air coming in there to that throttle bottle housing, which is not good on that fuel distributor and all that intake and fuel injection system, sucking dust in and debris. What's that? And this is your power steering fluid. Okay. So it's got a screwy type lid and a spring loaded. So you want to take that off and you can see it looks very clean. And there's a filter in the bottom of that Beautiful. down in there. So you are on the min mark down there, so it is a tad bit low. So we're probably going to have to get a little fluid in there eventually so you don't burn up the power steering pump. So we'll have to look and see if you have any power steering leaks on this unit, just to verify. Would you mind if I put some fluid in that for you? I don't you, mind. I don't mind. So it wasn't that low. Just, just enough to cause a little bit of a but now it's perfect. Exactly. See you, David? I, I Give it a few miles, though. Yeah. We would like to recheck that. But also, Toby, this has hydraulic suspension as well. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah, the hydraulic pneumatic suspension, they call it, which runs off this reservoir. And those are really actually good handling, good, you know, shocks. But the issue is when they go bad, they go bad in bad ways. Like how bad? I mean, you should have to replace just one side of these units. You can be set back two, three thousand dollars for one, one shock on them. But so, does it just kind of like go low when it fails, or some just... of them will get a little low? But most of the time, what happens is it gets gets weak and stops dampening the shock, okay. and then so it's we'll a rough ride. Rough ride, and okay. if it gets bad enough, I've heard them clunking before. But my brake fluid is perfect, right? Well, it's clean. It is a little low, but it is clean. I give mm. you that. Mm. You know, last one you had was not the was best. Nasty. So you're looking pretty good on that. Water pump looks like it might be kind of new, though. Someone might have replaced the water pump on this at one time. And the aluminum looks pretty shiny, and I can see someone's actually had some sockets on the bolts. So that's good news for you. New water pump. Sweet. That's going to be an expensive job, so you saved some money there not even thinking about it. I think we better lift it up and look at, see what we got on the lower side. Oh, might as well. You know, and you're talking about mice and chipmunks and rodents, mm -hmm. but, you know, you got a lot of insulation missing all the way around the engine bay here. Something had a, a lunch or two, I believe. Really? Yeah. You think I was attacked by gerbils also? Hey, buddy! What are you doing? 
likes Mercedes ourselves. No, he likes me. He's a handsome man. Oh, what a good boy. Oh, there's no leakages down here whatsoever. <laughs> Did, do, do you this. need glasses? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, if there's no leakage, how come there's drips coming off the alternator? And that's oil drips. So that's a leakage in my opinion, but yes. you know, that's my personal opinion. This is nicht good, yeah. Which is coming from up top, just like I thought. Looks like the front valve cover, possibly a timing chain cover. Oh, yeah. looks like you got a little leak here from the oil pressure sensor too. Mm -hmm. Kind of familiar. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, what is this? This is the height sensor, yeah, right? Yeah, they run that off the front sway bar there, and that goes to that valve block, and that's for the suspension. And you can see a little bit of residue build up around that too, like it might have a little seep out of it too. Nothing to be concerned with because it's not dripping, but that's another very, very, very expensive part on these cars. Any of the suspension stuff can add up to thousands of dollars for one, oh, one piece. That's kind of moist in this area here, isn't it, Toby? Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, it's multiple. It's over here, it's moist, oh, it but is. then it's moist on this side too. Well, his drive belt's good though, look, he's got no cracks. So his power steering pump's seeping, so that's some of the leak we're seeing. Oh. And that's why it was low on fluid, as it's seeping a little bit and running down here. It's not that bad yet, but that's what all this is. This is going to be this transmission cooler line, which is a pretty important part of the cooler line, because if you actually blow that in half or it breaks in half, you pump your transmission fluid out on the ground within a minute. If you're lucky, all the seven quarts, whatever you got in there, will be Ooh, pumped right out on out. the ground. Under so that pressure. would be one Why of the first. Why are you trying to scare me like this? That'd be it's not one a question of, the, of trying to. He's being successful in diagnosing I mean, issues that you have. I, I would just recommend doing fixing that first before any of them because, what? like I said, you know. The bar steering line? Uh, the transmission cooler oh, line. Oh, the transmission. Yeah, because if you do boast that or have more leaks out of that, you run low on fluid and cut, start messing up your transmission. Do you buy these tires with the vehicle? Yeah, they came with. See, They're good, right? Good good and dry cracked. Oh. You see all the major dry cracking in the tread there? Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, the, this one's even worse. That's, Did you say it came from Pump Springs? That's, right. that, yeah. that's unsafe at any speed, in my opinion. Wait, but I went 88 miles an hour yeah, on, on, on the track strip. Yeah, that's, Did you? That's, that's awesome, yeah. Grandpa. Hmm. Glad to, glad to see you're still here with us. <laughs> Looks like they might have put C class rims on the thing. What? Do you know what those are? Yeah, that's what I was going to I think these about. are like a C class. These are way too narrow for this car. You know what the C class is? Yes. Yeah, it's called the crap class. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, this is a point against you, my friend. Yeah. I, I like the factory limbs. They looked a lot better than these, but... Yeah, I, that, that was not my narrow. fault. I'll fix it. You I'll, could get I'll... some, like, E55 AMG limbs. Oh, yeah. They look real good on here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little fatter in the back, skinny up front. He's got the highest percentage of brake pad in front. I do get him oh, that. There you are. You're on there. 95% of brake pad left up there. Oh, yeah. Looks like this strut is basically definitely been smacking a little bit the bump stops broken in half up there and you can see a little bit of residual on the strut as well so the struts are in not the best of shape they're not actively puking or gushing your suspension fluid out yet but they are original and looking pretty old yeah definitely some cracking starting on your control arm lower control arm bushings but they're not ripped all the way through yet they're just surface cracks in them so i wouldn't be too concerned with that quite yet Someone did spend some decent money and put a power steering box in it at one point. I can tell that's a newer power steering box, the black unit here, so that's good. Those are a famous leak on these cars too, power steering leak, so. That new transmission was a rebuilt transmission too, so did you know that? Oh, really? Yeah, do you see how it's sprayed silver? Yes. So that's not factory color right there. They're going to be aluminum from the factory. Sprayed so silver. They, yeah, that. they sprayed it silver. And when they rebuild them, usually that's what they do is they spray them like that to look like aluminum. That way they don't have to clean it up spotless. I see. But it's good for you, well, though. Well, at least it's a new transmission. I knew, yeah, that should make you feel good. <clears throat> Except it's got a little leak on this side. What? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, and they, see, I was making you feel good over there, but I gotta, okay. I gotta put you down again over here. Okay. Yeah, it looks like one of these servo band O-rings might have a leak in it up here. Um, it's got a little it's, bit of residual up there. 
<laughs> Is there anything that's not leaking? Let's, can we start with that? <laughs> we could find something not leaking for you, I'm sure, sir. At least your shifter linkage bushings are all there. Most of them are missing. That's good. And probably when they put the transmission in, they probably gave you some new linkage bushings. New drive shaft flex disc looks pretty good. It's basically a big rubber disc. You get a little chunk of it out of it there, but there's no major cracking. And it seems to be pretty tight. A little bottom out going on at some point. It's pretty low, so that's to be expected. The low vehicle like that. Mainly just a little heat shield damage from when they bottomed it out, but nothing. It's okay, it's dynamics. Yeah, it's nothing right. major. New flex disc looks pretty good. Hmm, you do have quite a bit of build up the dust and debris back here as well. Most likely drove down a lot of dirt roads with this thing. Your rear shocks are looking a little better than the front ones though, I can tell you that. You got a little bit of seepage definitely, so eventually it's going to need some rear suspension. Quack, right back down in there you see the build up on the bottom, it's real hard to see, but you yeah. got a lot of build up yeah. and that's that hydro pneumatic suspension fluid. If I don't want the hydraulic suspension, um, is, can, can you swap it to just regular shocks? Just I've seen just it done before, and there's kits out there that they sell to uh -huh. change it over. The issue with that, every one I've seen changed over or changed over myself, they never ride like the Mercedes again. They ride more like a Toyota Camry. So, you know, you got to pay to play is what I say. Uh -huh. You know, you want that smooth ride, that good comfort, you're going to have to have, have that hydro pneumatic suspension. there's no top fluid leaking here. No? Well, that's not what's on my floor right there? Oh, shoot. Uh-huh. Fresh grips coming off here. That's what you're talking so about. So is that the top? Do you think that's the top? Big time. Yeah, that's hydraulic top fluid. You can see how clean it is. You can tell it's definitely hydraulic. Yep, it smells like hydraulic pneumatic top fluid to me. So you definitely have a piston back there in that back in this panel on this side. Uh-huh. And is it coming out of both corners? Uh, oh yeah, it's coming out of both corners. Wait, what? Really? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh -huh. I can see the moisture from Yeah, here. it's it's not as bad as the other side, but it's wet and running down and coming out. I would use the top as minimal as possible. Really? If, otherwise, yeah. you're going to have to add fluid to it. Fluid's going to keep dumping out, and eventually it'll get enough air in the system, not want to work properly, and you're going to be... So leave it alone for now. You're going to be at a convertible top specialist spending about four to 5000 to fix it. Damn! But that's like half the value of this car. Mm-hmm. Proud SL owner. Yep. Toby, uh, who bought the best, I mean, car, and who bought the junkiest car? Can you rank him just quickly? Personally, in my opinion, this Mustang Q is just gonna be number one. This Un one? Unfortunately. I'm not a big Ford guy, don't get me wrong, but I am gonna have to say this Mustang, someone put a lot of money into. And there's very few problems with it at okay, this point. Okay. There is a couple, don't get me wrong. Next but, down. But, okay, okay, keep going, and I'll tell you my thing. Okay. Jaguar. Yeah, the Jag! The Jag, it's got some oil leak that's got to be fixed and a few small things, but yeah. overall, the interior is spotless. It is. The motor sounds really good. It certainly does. And the windshield's new, it's got a bunch of new stuff on it. So All right. Visually and mechanically, it's going to need some tires and a few small things, but that's the bang for the buck. So second place, you would say, is money, the Jaguar. Oh yeah, money-wise, definitely. All right. And then it all goes downhill from there. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yep. Unfortunately, Look. next is going to be the Nissan. Uh-huh. And that definitely needs some more work than the rest of them, <laughs> but not quite as much as that poor old SL we just looked at. Well, before you jump on the SL, can we at least compliment the chrome tip exhausts? Because those on the Nissan are so special. Oh, wait, those caused a problem, too. Yeah, <laughs> that was probably a bad upgrade. You know, more of a, a downgrade than an upgrade, it was in my opinion. a terrible opinion. upgrade, yeah. But, you know, he might like the rattle. I, I, he might. It, it might make him feel his youth again. So, Andre, I think it's your turn with your Mercedes. I, I did the math. I, I think it was, you're saying it's the worst. Unfortunately. Sorry <laughs> for the bad news, but got to tell the truth. Okay, so according to you, Toby, um, America gets four points, the best. Mm. Then three points goes to UK. Mm -hmm. You Ni bet. Nigel. Yes, Nigel gets uh, it. Um, two points to Japan mm. and one point to Germany. Unfortunately. All right, let me do the calculation. Okay. And just to remind you that my car was the least expensive and the best looking and the most comfortable with the best stereo system and I do have a back seat which only the Ford Mustang has which was first 
So really, I'm very close to being in first place, I think. I mean, if you could have done a little better in the drag race, probably. Yeah, yeah. That was probably the only issue. That was the issue. I blame, mm -hmm. I blame my bulk. I, I think that if I were you, it would have been faster. Had a better look. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. this is surprising. After two episodes, mm -hmm. it's a tie for first place. A tie? So Nathan had an upper hand in the first episode, but now Tommy ties him because he won this competition. Nine points apiece. <sighs> So and, we're and tied then, for first. And then Roman and I tied for second place. We, we, we both have a, both have six points, so it's all fine. It's all fine. There's yeah. no trophy for second place, okay. just so you know. By the way, can I give you my opinion of these four cars? Check engine light on the Ford disqualified. You know, right. he's right. There's a che I mean, you can't legally smog this with a check engine light, can you? Okay, uh, the Jaguar. You have worked on it for nine years before with Plus. the previous owner, mm -hmm. so that's not fair. It's just disqualified. How because, is it not fair? Because Toby is a great mechanic. Other and great the, mechanics. The car is perfect, so it's, it's not fair. All right, Nissan. You can't just, a, just a junker. Oh, for oh, just a junker. That's not nice. It's yeah. leaky. That's well, not nice. They all leak a little. Yeah. Come and my now. car, well, well, speaking of leaking, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> it, this is a lose. And Nine thousand dollars for your car. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. And okay. then you need another nine to just get it on the road. <laughs> I was going to say, at least you're going to double that. Okay. Well, I guess uh, the, the next episode is going to be very interesting, guys. Am I correct? Yes. So stay tuned for that. And check out otfl.com for everything automotive. I guess we're going to be pushing this car home. Nathan, what do you think? No, no, no. You have to be gentle with it. I am being gentle. Speak German. Nine. Du bist was wir schon. Ich habe dich vernichtet. That's three times, Andre. Just keep cranking and tell us all. Give it a couple of cranks. Oh, yes! What a fine oil machine. If I make it back to TFL headquarters, it'll be a miracle. And all the Germans are going to come after me and yell that my German is terrible. Oh, oh I smell that. Yes, Sorry. good. Good. So the Jackie point, hopefully. 9,000 bucks doesn't buy you much no more. Inflation, you know. I'm still idling. I took my foot off the accelerator just in case. Well, go gentle, please. You tell the car to go gentle. Oh, wow, she's really not liking it. Keep your phone handy in case I don't make it back. You're fine. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. Yeah, appreciate it. Have a good day. Stop whipping them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a grasshopper still. Don't make it home. I love the thing.